For question number six, it's important to remember that the remainder theorem relates to x and y values of a function because the remainder theorem involves plugging an x in and getting the remainder, which is essentially the y value. So if we have our function in red here, we have our input x, our output is y, those are x and y coordinates. And the remainder theorem is when we have a factor, for example, x plus 1, we input the root, which is negative 1, and the y value then represents the remainder of that. So if we take a look at the example 6a, if we divide by x plus 1, the root is negative 1. So if we plug negative 1 into, I'm just going to do this here, if we plug negative 1 into our x value, we get a y value of positive 16. So in this case, this gives us a remainder of 16. For x minus 1, we plug in the root value of 0, and we can see that those are going to be the ones that cross at the x-axis. So at x equals 1, it crosses at the x-axis, which means then it's a factor Therefore, the remainder is 0. And then lastly, for dividing by x minus 2, that's going to be the same as substituting x equals 2. And the y value, which is the remainder, then becomes the remainder of negative 8. So again, the, the remainder theorem does relate to substituting in x values into the function, which then implies that we have an x and y coordinate as well. So we can get remainders from the graph like this. In example 7, we're going to divide a fourth degree polynomial by a quadratic. So when we divide by a quadratic, we're, we're, we can have a linear remainder. Now it doesn't have to be linear, it could be a constant value, but we can have a linear remainder. Just like when we divide by a linear function, our remainder is a constant. So because we are using dividing a fourth degree by a degree two, we could do this either by factoring and using our uh, synthetic division twice, but that relies on a remainder of zero. So it's going to be easier to do this one using long division and more not only easier but more reliable so when i plug this in i do have to remember that i have i'm missing a power of two so i need to put in a power zero x squared minus five x plus seven and then using my uh, process of, of figuring out, matching the first terms, I need an x squared times x to match the first terms to get x4. And then I end up with minus 2x cubed plus 3x squared. Subtracting, I get 5x cubed minus 3x squared. And repeat the process, so I get plus 5x this becomes minus 10x squared plus 15x subtract I end up with negative 20x and then multiplying sorry minus this is going to be negative 3 minus negative 10. That's going to be positive 7x squared minus 20x. And then again, match that last coefficient. It's going to be plus 7. 7x squared minus 14x plus 21. And then notice that our remainder, we're going to end up with negative 6x. 7 minus 21 is minus 14. So the remainder then works out to be 
negative 6x minus 14, and that is a linear remainder by dividing by a quadratic. For example, 8, we're just going to apply the remainder theorem. So we have a remainder of negative 25. So when we plug in the x equals negative 2, so we know that p of negative 2 is equal to negative 25. And when we plug that into our expression, so negative 2 cubed minus 2 times negative 2 squared plus k times negative 2 minus 1, we now have our equation which we can solve for k. So here we have negative 8 minus 8 minus 2k minus 1. So I end up with negative 17k, sorry, negative 17 minus 2k. I'm going to move the 2k to this side. I'm going to add 25 to both sides. I get positive 8. So I get k is equal to 4. So when to make this, uh, to get a remainder of negative 25, the k value needs to be equal to 4.